All right, let's talk about the PE image file header and what that is. It's basically the loader information that the computer needs to load the file. What I have here is I have a screenshot of a picture that I took uh, on a program called PEView.exe. This is a program that anyone can download and you can open up a file in exe on it. In this case, I've opened up an exe file and I'm looking at a, I'm looking at a portion of the file called the image file header. You can see there's a couple of things, important information here. One of the first things to note is what we have here is called the entry point address. Now you may be wondering, what is the entry point address? Well, this is the point that the machine needs to start processing the file and loading the file. This is all in assembly. This is how the CPU actually interacts, interacts with, the, with the assembly code and the hardware of the file itself. As I said, this course is not really, you know, uh, made uh, here to, to teach you assembly. It's not really uh, made for, as a reverse malware engineer, but this is a point that, that you need to know, the entry point address, really what it is. And as I said, it is the point where the file starts actually processing. It is the file, it is the point where the CPU needs to find to actually execute something on the system. So that's important to know. And if you do go ahead in your career and you do more with reverse malware engineering, you will be very, very very familiar with uh, entry point addresses or EPAs. Uh, the other thing the image header has is it has the date and timestamp of the file when it's created. Now this is the metadata of the file, so even if external, uh, if, if the file externally is changed uh, on when it was created, um, usually it's much, much more difficult to um, modify the, the image header file. Not impossible, and, uh, and there are advanced attackers when they're hiding their spots and doing things, they will modify this because, like I said, it's definitely not impossible. Just a lot of people forget about that this is another way to check what the date and timestamp of the file creation time is.